Ladies and gentlemen, this is Secrets of the Battle Box. We are here at the BattleBots Destructathon, participating in Proving Grounds, and when there's only two teams on site, this gives you unparalleled access to the Battle Box. And I want to share some of that with you today. So, we're going to take a trip inside and see what we can learn about these hollowed hulls here at the BattleBots Destructathon. So a quick safety note before you ever enter the battle box is there's a couple rules we all follow. One is you have to wear PPE when going in, which means long pants, closed toed shoes, safety glasses, kind of the same attire you would do in a machine shop. Rule number two, never step on any of the hazards. Um, you don't put your foot over the kill saw slot. You don't put it over a ramrod hole. Uh, you don't sit or you know, put your limbs inside the screws and you don't hang out under the hammer. The first thing I always do when I get in the battle box is run around and check all the seams. This is something a lot of the high level uh, drivers do. All right, so apparently the red bee is where all the worst stuff is. It's right here, I can hear my foot catch. Looks like someone's actually tried to grind this one down. There's still a catch point though. All right, so if I'm at the driver's box, there's no rushing them towards the screws. You're gonna catch that lip. Also, it looks like red square, due to this seam, has a better chance of a box rush. Though it would work for blue, as long as they favor that slant, or favor driving by the uh, shelf. And ironically, since no one likes to be here in the little death square, the small little area you can corner bots in, the floor back here is actually the nicest in the entire battle box. There are no seams. Well, there are seams, but they're, they don't stick up. You can really tell the majority of the action happens right over the two Bs. And people also don't like being over here because this is where you can get punted out. So if you're in Red Square, try to immediately drive. There's actually a really nasty dip right by these two kill saws. So something I can tell you from experience, because uh, Scorpio's got flung into this panel once and it's been replaced since. Uh, you, don't, you don't see nearly as many marks over here because it makes the drivers nervous to have the robots fight right here. Speaking as a driver who's done it, so like right here, I guess this is the best bet for a good fight. Slightly less traffic. You are surrounded by kill saw slots though. So one of the reasons I've taken the time to make this video is I wanted to give you guys the dimensions to help you design your own robot. There are certain features of the battle box that if you design a robot at a certain width or your forks at a certain length, you will just struggle and have problems. And some of the very high up teams have this exact data so I wanted to take the time and make a video to give everyone the same advantage the top teams have. So I wanna start with the most dreaded hazard of them all, the kill saws. Not because of the saws that come out of the ground, but because of the giant holes in the floor. Um, when designing your forks, you should try to make sure they're longer than 21 inches and 
that the tip of them is wider than two inches. So it's a 21 by two inch gap. The overall slot in the floor is 24 by 14. And as you can see, not only do they have the slots, but they actually are slightly inset with a little bit of a gap all the way around them. These things cause so many hang-up problems for the wedge and fork robots. And they've actually gotten bigger over the years because now there's a sparkler system that shoves sparks out for a dazzling performance. Next up are the big bad bumpers. These things slam in and out. Total of 14 inches tall, which puts their spikes at the one inch mark, seven inch mark, and 14 inch mark. A total of four feet long. And they swing out 37 inches. Now, I've seen these push two battle bots at once, so that means their hydraulic system is capable of moving at least 500 pounds. Next up, we have the dreaded screws. These things I have gotten stuck in too many times to count. I wanted to make special attention, and this is actually what got me to make this video, was I wanted to take detailed dimensions of this as I get ready to redesign Scorpios. I want to try to make it hard for him to get stuck in this. Now there's actually still a piece of hypershock inside the screw hazard. So the screws have a gap to the spikes of about nine inches. So if your robot is less than nine inches in width, you can get stuck behind it. The overall width of the screws, it is 71 inches from one side to the other. Last but not least, the screw height is about 15 inches tall, 14 to 15. And as we see underneath, that is less than a half inch. I do not want to reach my hands inside the screw to put the tape measure there, but that is about a half inch off the floor. So that is the screws, They're 71 inches each, and 28 inches between them. And it's a repeating pattern. So those screws by the upper deck are the same and the screws behind the blue square are also the same. Our next hazard, the one that's rarely used, is the three inch ramrods. These things pop out of the ground about six inches and uh, you don't see them used that often. But they are located in a pattern a square all the way around the arena marked by these yellow circles. They outline the kill saws and they will catch forks due to the fact they are in set, just like the kill saws do. So as we come into the load in load out area, this is the one spot where you can chuck a robot and get them out of the wall. Now I believe for the actual show they have mounts here that they are going to put one of the the, the builders colorfully call these sneeze guards. Ever since Tombstone got hucked out and it turned a match between two champions into a, uh, a 10 second round, they decided they didn't want that because they always want us to fight. And so there are now these slide pieces all the way around. Here at the Destructathon, they don't put them in to make it easier to get the robots in and out. But in most seasons that have aired, if you throw a robot over this wall, it is a knockout. And this wall is only 14 inches tall. And it runs eight feet wide. Now I know a lot of you might be wondering why did I bother to give you that dimension? But there is a rule, your BattleBot size limit is you have to be able to fit through this opening. So that eight foot width on the door 
is actually what sets the width of your, the biggest sized battle bot. And the height, well, let's go ahead and get that dimension. So going, so going from the floor all the way up, we can see the doors are eight feet tall. So that is the size restriction at BattleBots. You have to be able to fit through an eight foot by eight foot opening. Next up, one of my favorite hazards, the one I wish, the only one I like to use, the hammers. Now you'll notice the hammers have these triangles underneath, kind of like a laser pointer. They signify exactly where the hammer strikes. And you'll notice they are in different colors. They're in red and blue. There's two, one on either side of the driver's box, and there's two in the other far corners inside the little death squares. Drivers refer to the area between the deck and the bumper as the death square, because if you and your opponent get in here, you're just gonna be trading blows because there's really no room to drive. So the ones that are colored in red are controlled by the red square and the ones colored in blue are controlled by the blue square. Usually there is a second operator or third or fourth, depending on how many drivers you have. But this operator stands at this position with those controls and they drive the hammers. And it's really nice that the control station is right by the hammer itself. So you have a great view when you're doing this one. And you have a terrible view when you're doing that far one. So the hammer swings out 36 inches from the corner. And the area behind the hammer because remember, there's a couple tricks builders have found over the years. You can actually use this to pin your opponent because if you hold the button, it will actually hold the hammer down. And so you can put your opponent here, pin them with this, move to the center of the ring, spin up, and then release your opponent. And so far they haven't put a time limit on the hazard hold, but I have a feeling they will soon. The distance back here is 40 inches for the gap in the sneeze guard. And yes, you can huck a robot back there. And to try to get over the hammer, it is 65 inches. One of the most dreaded hazards in the battle box and the newest one to be introduced is the upper deck. Now, there's quite a few little odds and ends to the upper deck, including a Diana. So one is getting your um, fork stuck underneath the seam. You can see they are bolted down tight, but there's about a 12 inch gap and with enough damage and a sharp enough fork, you can actually jam your forks underneath this. The gap to get a robot from here to there is about nine inches. And then there's a secondary lip at the 10 inch mark here. So it is quite hard to get a robot up and over this. The overall entrance on the right or left hand sides is 69 inches. There is a little 12 inch bumper here at the back. I'm sorry, 24 inch bumper. That is 12 inches high. So if you ram someone to the corner, it's actually harder to get them in onto the upper deck. This is identical to the screw hazards that are on the red square and blue square. So once again, the same 14 inches. They do have this Lexan panel that covers part of the motor housing for the screws. If you get a robot up here, that is 36 inches wide. The overall deck is quite large. 
that dimension will not actually help anyone on design. Now uh, you can see where a robot's blowing a corner of that off. And this side is exactly identical to the rest. So that's the upper deck, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's just stand on it. Even taller. It has the sneeze guard along the back. And when you're on the upper deck, you have the same spike hazards facing inward as you would on the outer wall. While we were here at the Destructathon, we actually managed to catch up with the founder of BattleBots, Trey Roski, and he gave us some insight on what changes will be happening next season to the arena. So the, the arena floor, we are planning on welding together, so it will be seamless um, by the oh, time we go cool. back to the that doesn't mean it's going to be perfect for no. Well, the, the kill saws are probably still The kill saws are always there. Those, you guys, you know, <laughs> that one, you know, you take that in your own. <laughs> I'm going to keep those, and that hole is going to be there. And Put a fork on at your own peril. Yeah. So they'll be there. Uh, that, you know, definitely try to. I'm not a big fan of the wedges and the wedgelets, obviously. Being the guy who created the first wedge, you know, I. I you know, there's been all kinds of ideas thrown out about, you know, changing the height level of the floor and all that to get rid of wedges and stuff. And that, that hurts our speed, which makes great television. You know, having a robot haul ass across the arena if it was an uneven floor. And truthfully, it would hurt vertical spinners, flippers, hammers. Well, maybe not necessarily hammers, but even hammer saws. Like, if I wasn't under my opponent and I swung my hammer saw into him, I would just flip over. Yeah. And most... Most weapons start with, I get a wedge under you to allow me to use my weapon. Yeah, yeah. I know, I just wish there was more, you know, less wedges. You know, I hate it. I hate when people just sit there and they're trying to see who can get under and back off and under, because that, that's not exciting for the audience or the TV audience, you know. The shelf is another thing. I know I surprised all the contestants with that. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk on whether to get rid of the shelf or shortening it. One of the ideas is to uh, remove four feet, put it four feet less. Another idea is to kind of make it more permanent out um, kind of thing. Um, I've been taking audience votes, you know, since we started in February here. You know, who likes the shelf for the audience? Now, it's a lot different for the contestants. So the contestants, yes. I think they're, you know, it's pretty close to a 50-50, you know. It might, might be a few more saying get rid of the shelf, right? Um, but it's close. The audience and the television audience, they love the show. So it is a, it is a difficult idea to figure out um, whether, whether we keep it or leave it. It's been there long enough now. I think it adds an element to the show. So while talking to Trey, he actually revealed to us and gave us permission to talk about the next hazard he is planning for the battle box. We have never had such a big scoop here on the Scorpios Builder blog but we decided to make a second video. So please like and subscribe and come back when we talk about the next hazard coming to the battle box. Next week is Halloween. It will be our spooktacular, but the new hazard video will be coming soon. So please subscribe. That's right. Forbidden love here at the Destructathon. He was from Scorpios. She was from Hypershock. Will their two teams ever let them date? Find out next week. No, I'm just kidding.